Hello and good afternoon to everyone. My name is Gabriela Civico and I'm the director at the Center for European Volunteering here in Brussels. I'm very sorry that I can't be with you today to celebrate in person all the wonderful efforts and impact that the volunteers in the Evera area are making. I congratulate all of you and especially those at the Fundação Eugenio Almeida for all the support that you give to volunteers throughout the whole year. Today is a symbolic day internationally to recognize and support those volunteers who really help out in our communities, in our societies, putting into practice European values. And it's a day that's very important here in Europe. I'm going to share with you some ideas that we have from the Center for European Volunteering contained in the Blueprint for European Volunteering. The Blueprint for European Volunteering was developed by the CV members mm -hmm. to promote inclusion, equality, rights and values in Europe in a structured framework. It connects with CV's vision that we need to bring the equality, rights and values represented through volunteering to the European context. And we need to connect local, regional and national frameworks of volunteering with European policy frameworks in volunteering as well. Volunteering plays an important role in social cohesion, interpersonal relationships, and paving the way to make the European values a reality. Volunteering means more in Europe than just the tasks it delivers. It has a deeper social meaning, meaning a binding solidarity that helps us all to understand the diversity and promote and defend rights in Europe. The Blueprint for European Volunteering 2030 was approved by the CV General Assembly in September 2021. And it advocates for volunteering based on European values, democracy and inclusion as a key resource for the future of Europe. Not only as a service delivery mechanism, but as the glue that holds society together in solidarity with one another. It serves as guidance to CV and other stakeholders concerned with volunteering, especially policymakers, regarding the steps that need to be taken to ensure that volunteering reaches its true potential. It's important to remember that the Blueprint acknowledges that there are different cultural and legal contexts for volunteering in Europe, and the outcomes from the suggestions will vary depending on this variety of circumstances and different volunteer profiles. The Blueprint contains five thematic contexts. The first one, focuses on independent and inclusive engagement. And here we can see that there is a focus on democratic engagement, showing that volunteering is an essential component for true European democracy. And that active engagement of citizens, both in practical action and policy development as volunteers will lead to systemic change, and this is crucial. We also focus on the ideas of dignity and freedom that the contribution of volunteers should be accepted as a key part of the team effort in Europe and a trusted social partner for social cohesion. Volunteers should also be seen as actors in their own destiny, engaging in participatory democracy. And that the funding for volunteering should be transparent and democratic. Only through clear and democratic and transparent funding can quality volunteering thrive. Collaborative networking is also important through cross-sector relationships, cross-sector collaboration, and local community development as highlighted in the European Volunteering Capital Competition is essential for volunteering to be a true driver of value creation. Transnational cooperation and solidarity is also very important. We've witnessed an increase in activism and increasing solidarity on the global level due to the different crises, different global challenges that we have. And any volunteering policy in Europe needs to take into account this global context. The second chapter in the blueprint looks at new volunteers and methods. We've seen a rise in non-formal volunteering recently. Digitalization and social networking has facilitated the increased amount of non-formal activities. And especially in crisis situations, spontaneous volunteering can be a key resource for community resilience. Digitalization and digital development has had the potential to mobilize more participants and support social movements. But we need to remember quality in all these new ways of engagements. 
And to ensure quality, we need to make sure that new volunteers are prepared and trained for their experiences and their roles. The volunteering infrastructure needs to be developed so that they can provide those volunteers and those coordinators with that knowledge. This chapter also reflects on the new employment situations, the changing employment regulations and working procedures that are leading to different realities of employment. We are trying to support volunteer organizations all across Europe to adapt to this new reality so that even more volunteers can still access the volunteering engagement that they wish to do. Welfare and health policies must have synergies with volunteering policies. People claiming benefits should not be excluded from volunteering at all. Although volunteering should always be based on its own free will and should never be required by the state as any conditionality for any support. Voluntourism is a growing phenomenon and at CV we have many resources available, toolkits, guidebooks, how to make voluntourism really useful, really good for social impact in the community and not serving as an exploitation in any way. The third chapter of the blueprint looks at empowerment and we see what's needed to enable more and more citizens to volunteer and how we can enable the richness and diversity of the volunteering environment in Europe, making sure that everyone who wants to has access to volunteering opportunities. We reflect in this chapter again on digitalization and how digitalization can make an enormous contribution to social inclusion, but also due to the digital divide across Europe can also inadvertently prevent access to people from different backgrounds. So when we're looking at digitalization of volunteering, we have to consider how we are including everyone in the process. The ability to provide quality, long-term and sustainable impact as an appropriate response to community need, especially in crisis situations, is very important as we have all seen recently. For this reason, the stability and sustainability of volunteering organizations is so important. The legal and policy frameworks should facilitate the changing reality of the volunteering ecosystems in such a way that quality volunteering opportunities can continue to be provided and that potentially excluded groups can also be included in volunteering and that there are no legal or policy barriers that prevent this. The fourth chapter of the blueprint looks at the appreciation of contribution, how we have to understand volunteering for its true value in terms of combating issues that we all place in society, all the challenges that we face in society. Volunteers should not be depicted as amateurs playing a side role to professional employees, but they should be celebrated as a complementary approach, adding value as a unique resource for sustainable development. We need to look beyond service delivery in terms of how we value our volunteers. Mm -hmm. Volunteers are not just deliverers of tasks and services. Policymakers should understand not only the practical outputs of volunteering, but also the role that volunteering has to play in social cohesion and in interpersonal relationships. We all learn whilst we volunteer and the validation of learning that we acquire while we volunteer is very important. Volunteering provides a unique setting for civic education and is an important space for the acquisition of skills and competencies. Volunteer organizations need to be empowered to be sure that they can offer validation of learning to all those volunteers who want it. There is a continued lack of coordination at EU level regarding volunteer programs, policies and data. We need to gather more data so that we can understand the impact of different policies, so that we can do comparative analysis and we can understand how to make a more efficient, sustainable and evidence-based policies in Europe. The final chapter in the blueprint looks at resources and coordination and how public funding should reflect the true cost of volunteering to ensure that quality volunteering opportunities can be provided, that the correct support for the volunteers, the correct support for the infrastructure organizations matching the supply and demand for volunteers can be ensured that all barriers to volunteering can be removed. Volunteering is an important part of community resilience, but this needs to be planned in advance. It needs to be financed in advance. Cross-sector collaboration needs to be facilitated and allowed to flourish even before we have crisis, when these relationships will come to fruition. 
Volunteer managers and mentors need to be supported, they need to be trained, and there needs to be public funding in recognition of the crucial role of these figures in the volunteer life cycle. Quality volunteering can only really be achieved with quality volunteer managers and quality volunteer mentors. We need to also look at the physical, mental and social safety of the volunteers. We need to look at how online matching systems are working. And we need to look at the European Solidarity Corps programme at the European level and how that cannot be the end of the European story in terms of policy and programmes at the European level, but how it can just be the start of a truly European, broader European volunteering policy and engaged civic engagement policy. We count on you in looking at the blueprint, understanding the blueprint. It's now available translated into Portuguese. We hope that it will help you to advocate to gain more visibility for volunteering, that it will raise the profile of volunteers at the national, regional and local level, <clears throat> and that you can work with CV to contribute to the recognition of volunteering at the local level, <clears throat> connecting volunteering at the local level to the EU strategies and policy framework and particularly with the European Volunteering Capital Competition. We're focusing this year and in the coming years at CV on capacity building for volunteering organizations so that they can be more inclusive and equal in the way that they engage volunteers. In this way, we will advance gender equality and tackle multiple and intersecting discrimination in the volunteering section, sector itself. We will do this in particular in the framework of our full year partnership from the SERV Fund, Citizens Equality Rights and Values Programme, in our project called Revive, Revealing European Values in Volunteering, and our annual programme for 2022, Service Citizen Engagement for Recovery, Volunteering in Solidarity. To conclude, a reminder here about the true impact of volunteering, the true value of volunteering. And I know that there in Evera today, that's something that you are really celebrating, you're really understanding, having the togetherness between the volunteers, the volunteer managers, the policy makers, and the public who rely so much on the support of those volunteers. Volunteering continues to provide a constructive narrative for the future of Europe as an alternative to extremist and populist views and ideologies, and of course can contribute to its prevention. It also serves a crucial function in preventing hate speech and promoting inclusion and tolerance and enables citizens to be directly active in developing the Europe they strive for, based on equality, democratic values and inclusiveness. We're all contributing to the European social model to security, peace, cohesion, the recovery and prosperity, and contributing to the follow-up on the outcomes of the Conference on the Future of Europe. We will continue in this, our 30th year and in the next years, to promote equality through the actions of volunteers, to improve equality and inclusiveness in volunteering itself, and to keep the European values of human dignity, freedom, democracy, equality, rule of law, and human rights at the heart of what we do. Congratulations on behalf of all of us here at CV, and I wish you a wonderful International Volunteer Day 2022.